Hello, so this entry is about something that I am absolutely obsessed with and fascinated by. It's also extremely geeky. So uh, I wanted to talk with you today about something called the split ring compound planet epicyclic gear. Now it's a special arrangement of gears. And what makes it so special is that this type of gear arrangement can be very flat, can be powerful, can be precise, uh, it can have very low backlash and it has relatively few gears for the kinds of ratios you can get hundreds or thousands to one. And most importantly, for my purposes, it's 3D principle. I wanna show you what I mean by split ring, uh, meaning it, it uses an internal gear, actually it uses two of them, so they're split. You have one annulus, A1, and the second annulus, A2. Uh, there are planetary gears that rotate around the inside P1 type gears, P2 type gears, and then there are two suns. One is attached to the motor. The second one, interestingly enough, is attached to nothing. It sits there as an idler to kind of hold the gears in place uh, and spread them against the inner wall of the second annulus. And the, the entire second annulus uh, rotates as the output shaft. This is pretty abstract. Let me show you what one of these things actually looks like. Here, uh, I've got one. I 3D printed, and uh, if I have it lined up here, I can hit go. And it chugs right along. This doesn't even have any bearings at all, so it has a little bit of play, a little bit of wobble. I'll hit play one more time. I'll show you what Uh, the coolest thing about this, though, is watch this. I'll take I'll take the uh, top off and open it up. This particular gear arrangement actually has a ratio of 528 to one, and if you look at the inside, it has uh, the output shaft has one annulus. The inside has another you can you can see the teeth there and I'll hit I'll hit go again interestingly enough remember what I told you about there being an idler this is the idler it just sits there uh, and it pushes these gears out against the the inside of the inside of this one really the whole thing will work without this but I hit play again you can see there's just one little little sun gear in the middle. Oh, here it is. <laughs> it just goes on to the motor and turns. So there's the first stage. Uh, if you look at the layout here, what I think is, is so interesting is how few gears there are for that high ratio. Uh, the first annulus, so annulus one, is around the inside of this, and it has, in this case, it has 132 teeth to it. There is the little sun gear in the middle, and this one actually has 12, only 12 teeth to it. And then the uh, compound planets, and these are compound planets because each of the planets has two separate sets of teeth with slightly different pitches, uh, they ride right in there. I'll just put one back. And it drives it around in a circle. And lastly, annulus number two. Oh, by the way, each of these compound planets has 60 teeth on the top and 60 teeth on the bottom. It doesn't have to necessarily be that, but this one is just the same. The bottom annulus, or the output annulus, has 135 teeth. Top one has 132. You can think of the high ratio as owing to the fact that every time one of these teeth, or one of these planets goes all the way around, the second annulus has only advanced by a matter of three teeth. So an entire revolution of a planet, of an 
entire planet all the way around advances it by 3t. So if I put this back on there and I make an attempt to hold it centered, I can put this carriage on there. Um, yeah. It continues on its merry way, albeit it's able to slip now because it doesn't have the other teeth kind of holding it in position. This is a very good demonstrator for use of, of 3D printing. Um, you have to kind of get the teeth to line up in the right place. I can put this little one in there. Let's check and make sure it goes. Yeah. And then I can put the output back on there. Hopefully it's centered. It's reasonably well centered. Okay. And bring this around so I can see what's going on. And go. It's very, very difficult to stop, as you might imagine. This is the kind of thing you could use on a uh, telescope mount or a solar tracker or even a robot arm. I mean, you could imagine this being the, the elbow of a robot arm. I put holes in this, you could bolt a plate here. Uh, very, very strong from only a little NEMA 17 uh, stepper motor. So if you're interested in more about this, check out the links. I provided a link to a spreadsheet that shows you a little bit more about the rules of how to choose the teeth and the gearing. The real clincher seems to be once you've worked out the teeth number and how they relate, you have to size the, the second set of gears so that the radius between the center of the sun and the center of one of the planets is the same. That way the planet, the, the compound planets have the same shaft. So this one and this one, uh, those line up. So you end up, you end up having an odd kind of partial size difference. You can see the size of the, uh, the pitch is, is just slightly different in order to make this, uh, center, uh, share, uh, an axis of rotation. Anyway, <laughs> that's, uh, there's some geeky gear stuff for your next project. Uh, the split ring compound planet epicyclic gear. Have fun. <laughs>